So, great conversations to come. Let's start with the first, and that's my old friend Stephen Timms, MP, a former Labour financial secretary, number two at the Treasury, in fact, and importantly, a former employment minister. He's currently the chair of the Work and Pensions Select Committee. Stephen, really good of you to join us this afternoon. Philosophically, absolutely the heart of what you used to do in the Treasury, what you used to do in the Department for Employment, isn't work always better than being on benefit? Yes, I think it is. And uh, good news in the employment figures this week was that the number of people claiming unemployment benefit is the lowest it's been for nearly 50 years. And as as you said, there are now actually um, the number of vacancies uh, is actually uh, less than the number of people who are unemployed. And, and, you know, we've never been in that position uh, before. Um, but th- there is a very striking thing in these employment figures that the number of people in work at the moment is actually half a million less than the number who were in work before the pandemic. There's quite a large number of people who are not claiming unemployment benefit, but they're not working. They seem to have given up, uh, particularly older people. Maybe they're dipping into their pensions to keep themselves going at the moment instead of working. And one thing the government must do, and the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions acknowledged this uh, in a exchange I had with her in the House this week, is to, to work out ways to encourage those people to come back into work so that they're able to contribute to the economy. We do need to raise the number of people in work. Have you got specific ideas, and maybe Therese Coffey, the Secretary of State you refer to there, has got her own ideas as well, more that we can do, and you uh, as opposition and government, to get those people who do want to work into those jobs that need filling? And I was just saying in my introduction, you know, nearly 200,000 in the hospitality sector alone. Two specific ideas. At the moment, if you're not claiming unemployment benefit, there isn't really any help available from job centres or from public services to help you get into work. That, I think, is going to have to change. Some of those people who've just decided not to work, they're not going to claim universal credit, but they they don't want to work at the moment. We do need to find ways of helping them look for and find opportunities in employment to take up some of this very large number of vacancies we've got at the moment. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think we have to look at the way we organise our um, job centre and employment support services. There's a very large number of people who are out of work on health grounds and quite a lot of them would like to work and almost certainly could work if they had the chance. Now, we've discovered during lockdown, quite a lot of people can work from home. And for some people who, because of disability, need to stay at home, you know, we we need to work out how we can get them into some of the vacancies that are in place at the moment. Now, to do that effectively in a local area, we need the job centre, local colleges and the health service to be working closely together. And I think that means reorganising employment support so it's organised more locally so it can bring those local partners together to give people the best possible support if they're out of work on health grounds to get into and take up some of these vacancies that are available at the moment. A bit later on in the programme, I'm talking to someone from Bournemouth University who, interestingly, is doing exactly that with undergraduates to steer them at where they can find uh, good, promising and interesting jobs. That's what we need, I think. Absolutely right. Um, Final one, and it's a tough one, and it takes me back to when Tony asked Frank Field to think the unthinkable he did and he was promptly sacked for it. A lot of people told me when I tweeted hurrah for the ONS numbers, as indeed, to be fair, Stephen, you've just said it's good stuff, the overall picture is good. People told me I was wrong because these are zero hour contracts or they're low paid jobs. They're not worth having. I mean, the blunt point is this. If it's really eat or heat, we have to cut our cloth according to what's out there, do we not? Um, yes, we, we do. And, you know, we have seen increases in the national minimum wage or the national living wage as it's uh, as it's now 
uh, described. But there is more to be done. And I think there are some real challenges around people who are in the gig economy. That's why I was so disappointed that yet again, the government missed out the employment bill from the, the recent Queen's speech. They've been promising an employment bill for years now to look at the employment rights of people working in the gig economy. They've missed it out again uh, and that really does need to be addressed so that some of these problems can be sorted out. Stephen, great food for thought there. Uh, really grateful again for your time. I know it's a busy day for you. Uh, so thank you, and it's lovely to see you again. Take care. Thank you, Alison. Stephen Timms there, former Labour number two in the Treasury and Employment Minister with uh, genuinely some terrifically lively food for thought there.